So this is happening. President Biden is expected to sign an executive order this week targeting crypto and its potential use by U.S. adversaries, cough, cough, Russia, cough, cough, to get around allied financial sanctions as punishments for, you know, invading Ukraine. Those sanctions have touched Russian flights and sanctioned airspace, frozen hundreds of billions of dollars from the Russian central banks, as well as seized mega yachts owned by some of the oligarchs in Russia, making poor little Igor sad. Sorry, Igor. And so in today's video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the executive order, what it means for you, what I'm doing about it to prepare for the future. So first, before we kind of get too deep into this thing, can y'all just do me and Igor a favor here? I found out that that yacht was worth about $600 million. And although he's smiling, I think he's smiling through just a destroyed, sad, sad soul. So let's hit that like button to just really rub it in his face about uh, having that little yacht seized. Sorry, Igor. Bummer, bro. Let's go. Let's dive into the executive order. I broke it down in three main points. Okay, three things that they're trying to get done with this thing. First, they're trying to address policy and regulation clarity when it comes to crypto. So they sent this memo out to the Treasury Department, State Department, Financial S Stability Oversight Council, in essence, asking those departments and others to report back later this year what regulatory changes are needed to ensure national security in the United States over their monetary policy, as well as the economic impact of digital assets to the United States. And then later this year, they're expected to go ahead and take that information information and use it to go ahead and create a regulation framework to go ahead and continue to try and regulate cryptocurrency. Now, in addition to that, they also have some concerns from some policymakers that Russia could use crypto to get around the U.S. and ally sanctions. So FinCEN sent out a announcement and alert to financial institutions, in essence saying, look out for Russian actors trying to get around our sanctions. And this is something that many politicians are jumping onto, especially Senator Warren, as something that immediately needs to be addressed. I went ahead, I pulled up this article from MSN.com. They list Chainalysis, which is a on-chain metric company and they show that $34.1 million is what has been seen coming in from Russia since March 3rd. And that is down significantly from a peak of 70 million back on February 24th. And so it leads to the question, is Russia actually using cryptocurrency to subvert the sanctions that US is putting in place? Or are politicians kind of beating the drum to try and get some momentum behind getting some legislation pushed through? What do you think? So Coinbase also went ahead and took the opportunity. Paul Grewal, their chief, legal officer proactively went ahead and released this article earlier this week, in essence, breaking down their process of following AML and KYC requirements. If you didn't know, when you create an account with Coinbase, you have to provide your name, country of residence, upload ID, bills, that type of thing. And they go through and they proactively mention how they're able to go ahead, match and take care of users who are sanctioned, who shouldn't be using their platform and preemptively block them. Even users who don't use Coinbase, they have AI and other tools that they utilize to go ahead and analyze cryptocurrency wallets and how they engage with different protocols and other wallets that are sanctioned already and have the ability to go ahead and pre-blacklist those before they even hit their exchange. And then finally, they go through and they talk about how through that process, they have blocked over 25,000 addresses that have been linked to Russian users who are are sanctioned. Now they did go ahead and they mentioned that many of those sanctions are prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but it is interesting and concerning to know that that process is in place. And then finally, the establishment of a digital currency within the United States. So China has made some progress with their digital yuan project, and the US seems to be lagging due to regulators trying to get their hands around what crypto is and how they can go ahead and use it. And so they're also using this executive order to go ahead and kind of fast track that research to get the departments together and really come together with a plan on what a CBDC would look like. So I think overall, if we look at the executive order, I think it's a, another step in an ongoing acceptance of cryptocurrency by U.S. regulators, again, as they struggle to understand cryptocurrency at a fundamental level while also trying to regulate its exploding growth. Now, what this means for you, okay, I know this is going to sound cliche, not your crypto, not your keys. It's something that we need to stick with. So if your tokens are sitting on a centralized exchange right now and 
US goes ahead and they mention that assets need to be frozen for wallets that went ahead and interacted with Russian based projects or protocols. They could go ahead and give them the potential to go ahead and freeze your assets, seize your assets. So if you haven't done it already, I highly advise that you sit down this weekend with some Doritos, Cheetos, or Fritos. Shout out in the comments if you get that reference and get yourself set up on a hardware wallet where you actually own your keys. In addition to that, we're going to continue to see a lot of regulation come forward with crypto. And honestly, if you're in this thing to make some money, although these things are immediately painful because our small market of crypto overreacts in the short term, if you can go ahead and you can hold strong, Regulation is only going to make most of the cryptocurrencies boost in value as the uh, regulation and the clarity around how to operate those things become more clear, more and more funds and users are going to pile in. And I think another thing that you have to take away from this is maybe, maybe an additional level of respect for some truly decentralized and anonymous protocols. You know, the whole core of cryptocurrency back in the day was to have a borderless, frictionless, immutable currency that anyone can use and no nation state could kind of slap you on the wrist and stop you. And as we kind of move forward and cryptocurrency exchanges continue to look more and more like banks, I think giving respect where respect is due is going to be very, very important. So projects like Monero, projects like ThorChain that we've covered on this channel, I think are both going to be things that we need to be looking into. Now, <laughs> as for me personally, what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the lion's share of my crypto off of centralized exchanges. I do use Coinbase pretty uh, heavily. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to migrate that to my hardware wallet, where currently the only token in it is Dogecoin. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. OK, I bought a bunch and I'm not selling it. I'm holding it forever. Anyways, outside of that, I think all of us in the cryptocurrency space really need to do a better job of staying up on these key legislative issues and policymakers that we both like and we dislike in that space. I'm sure I'm not the only one has seen these type of posts and read it and seen a wall of text and just ignored it. And I think as cryptocurrency continues to come underneath more and more scrutiny, more and more evaluation from regulators, we're going to have to fight on those key issues that we're not willing to budge on. Because if we don't, it would be completely centralized, completely regulated, and all the beauty, the original core of what crypto currency is supposed to be it'll be out the window and then third i'm going to continue making great crypto content so if you're not already subscribed to the channel consider liking this video if it was helpful okay so let's recap so with this executive order biden is doing three things one the u.s government is continuing to try and regulate and understand crypto they're continuing to try and uh, establish that u.s digital dollar and its ability to protect u.s's uh, reserve currency role in the world and then of course they're going to bolt on some scare tactics around russia using Usage of crypto to subvert financial sanctions to generate a bit of momentum. Spicy. And for you, not your keys, not your crypto. I still stand by that. Set some time aside this weekend. Set yourself up a hardware wallet. Get yourself a snack. And in the long term, continue to expect a lot of turmoil around regulation in our markets, both overreacting and underreacting of that news as we all try and sort it out. But long term, big smart money is continuing to pile into crypto. The future is very clear. It's a much more regulated space five, 10 years from now. It is almost a mainstay in financial sectors. And I think if we can hold, just hold baby, we're gonna be in a good spot. So there you have it. My name is Ryan, no autopilot YouTube channel. There's a breakdown of what's happening right now with Biden's executive order on crypto. What I think you need to be watching out for, what I'm doing personally, as well as my ability to read the future and tell you everything's gonna be okay.